Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures, and I don't have anything on the screen, I don't know why that happened. Alright, well, it's another battle of quality versus quantity, and I'll let you guys be the decision makers on who wins, but I'm going to side with quality, with uh, Sparkle Trout's Black Knight Swordsman here. So we're starting things off, I just printed these for him the other day. These are from Maker's Colt June Patreon offering, which, considering June is almost at an end, if you're interested in this set, you might want to take a look for them while they're still there. But of course, you know, this stuff will be available later, as is always the case. This is not the head that the kit actually comes with. This is a basic Black Knight head from Maker's Colt. Everything else is pretty much stock for that set. I dig it. It looks cool. To coincide with that, another model that came from Maker's Cult that he did. This is one of the Blind Rage, I believe that's what they were called. Um, something like that. They were from Gear Guts, who both of us are big fans of the stuff that they've been making with Maker's Cult. This is not the actual original head. Um, the Blind Rage guys have some very unique heads with only their mouths exposed and their faces in completely encased, but he had a spare corn head. And I gotta say, it works. This is the hero champion lord body. I'm sure you'll see some other ones of their regular units soon, just to give you an idea of how big these guys are. So they're about Primaris size. But honestly, like this lord's body, you could probably get away with using him as a Terminator. That is a 40 millimeter base he's on. So that's what Sparkle Trout got done. And much like him, uh, stuff that we immediately printed ended up getting immediately painted. And so myself, I could not resist getting one of the Berserkers done from Raging Heroes. It may not be the nicest and neatest paint job. I probably can go back and clean up that skin because I love to go crazy with that Agrax Earthshade. And I didn't do the best job of printing the face. It's kind of hidden and encased by the furs there. But I got to say, from a distance, from a distance, I think it really works. And he's only on a 25 millimeter base too. It works, I think. I think. And to accompany him, we've got our overly splayed out legs Viking warrior here. Not the most exciting or intricate of paint jobs, but he's finished nonetheless. They're big dudes. <laughs> of course, it's not like the Frostgrave guys are all that big. Anyways, to accompany their furry friends, we've got a Titans of Adventure... Dwarf Barbarian from a while back. I, I don't even remember how long ago this guy got released. I really should have spent more time going back over the bone, but eh, oh well. He's a big dwarf. Their dwarves tend to be rather large. I was going to show you guys a whole thing on those Titans of Adventure, and I just haven't got around to it. But I gotta say, it's kind of cool if you've ever checked out, or you haven't checked out, Titan Forge's Patreon stuff. Every month they offer three new basic, I want to say almost generic, hero art types that, you know, kind of fit within all of the typical RPG parameters. So it's always a surprise what you're going to get, but they have been doing it for quite a few months now, which is kind of cool. All right, totally random, a Heartbreaker Kev Adams Goblin that Impact Miniatures has put out. You guys are interested. As always, we'll have those links down below. You can take a look at most of the stuff that we are printing and painting yourselves. Let's see what else. Any other printed stuff? Yes, there is. The Blind Swordsman from Titan Forge as well. I tried painting little eyeball patterns all over his... You, no, I was going to say you caught the Hakama pants there. It was a kind of rough, rough print. But I think I got it to work out okay. Like I said, Titan Forge's stuff is pretty big, and even the Raging Heroes guy is still bigger. Get these guys out of the way a little bit. 
Oh uh, gosh, his skin came out terrible on camera. That is not good. I want to say this is a one of the guys for the Explorer Society from the expansion from Malifo. I think we gotta go touch up that skin tone. It does not look good on camera. Matongi, something like that. The hunter dudes. Speaking of hunters, we have this guy from Bestiarum. I tried to make him as filthy and banged up as possible, as is usually the case with most of these guys from Bestiarum. I thought he really needed to be appropriately filthy to have that Dark Souls vibe going on there. Let's see. Oh! An old random lizard man that Bob the Inquisitor gave me. Very simple, and then I started painting up a random Horror Games Atlantic lizard to accompany it. Why he's wearing those things? I don't have a good answer for you. I don't know. We should see the War Games Atlantic Lizard Men on this channel, hopefully in the near future, if I ever finish building the box, or enough of the box to satisfy my desires. We showed this guy off somewhat recently. This is from Monster Fight Club Cyberpunk Red series of resin figures. This is one of their agitators. Kept it pretty simple. Kind of a nice figure, though. And then here's a really random one, also from Impact Miniatures. Now, this guy is not 100% finished. Uh, this is from their Whisper line, and I originally tried to paint it up all nice and gritty and grungy, and I just didn't care for it, and I needed to have it in bright, super robot colors. But you can see there's not a lot of shading. I'm going to actually go back in with one of those Gundam liner pens, and we're going to finish him up all good and proper, because, you know, robot, mecha, it needed to be bright and colorful and cheerful. Which, I think I did a decent job of at least getting that to come across. And finally this week, we have the Hold Ray. I think that's what it was called. One of the Dwarven heroes. This is the Artisan version. From Parabellum's Conquest game. He is a busy model, but I think after having painted him, it kind of sort of made sense what's going on there. He's got like all these little icon things he's carrying around on his shoulder pads there and they're all kind of wrapped up in the ropes that's what that's all about and at least he does match up color wise with all of my other dwegon he's a big dude though of course just about everybody in conquest is big not as big as the predator for example but big nonetheless Let's see this. Yeah, see, <laughs> putting some of the other dwarves I've got handy, you can see there's a pretty big difference in size there. So yeah, that's what I got done this week, um, which I guess isn't too bad considering I really wasn't home most of it. Uh, like I said last week, I traveled through time and ended up celebrating my anniversary with my wife, which was nice and peaceful and relaxing. Weird without the kids, but we are now off in San Diego at the Wild Animal Park with the kids while you are watching this. So that's kind of cool too. So if I don't get back to you when you are watching this the day it first airs, my apologies, but we will hopefully get that dealt with relatively soon thereafter. So not a bad haul from either of us if I can get this camera to cooperate, which it doesn't want to. I've got a new tripod that I'm trying to use here and it's not the most stable as you can see so yeah we'll, we'll keep working on that but i gotta say i enjoyed the stuff that sparkle trout here has got finished and hopefully he will continue to get stuff done i just gave him a whole bunch of other stuff to work on so yeah um sadly i didn't have that many people woo, <laughs> respond to what we should be printing up in the future on our Patreon, and I do have to plug that, I guess, every now and then. Usually seems like it's on Mondays, but yeah, if you haven't had a chance, please do check that out. Uh, I guess I will be doing some giant dinosaurs. They've got a big three-headed um, 
giant T-Rex model from Mini Monster Mayhem that I'm just going to have to get done. But okay. Overall, not a bad haul this week. Hopefully all you guys out there are getting stuff painted too. And hopefully we will get to see those results on the table in the very near future. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.